Well, in Popo Health, Mac Dr. Poppy Ramatuba is in the news. Uh, why she is in the news uh, may be subjected to different opinions as hard comments uh, have been interpreted across various points of view. South Africa's acceptance of other SADC member states and indeed the rest of Africa has been in the spotlight for some time. And the latest comments by the Limpopo uh, Mac brings uh, these issues uh, to the fore again. Uh, Dr. Ramatulu's uh, comments uh, to a Zimbabwean patient have brought the topic of xenophobia up again in South Africa. But in another vein, many South Africans have also seen this as an act of patriotism. Did the Limpopo Mac protect her people by speaking against the influx of illegal patients in South Africa? Did she break a significant part of the Hippocratic Oath? What's the way forward for the SADC? Welcome to VSA, I'm Suleiman. Well, Dr. Popi Ramatuba, Health Mac in Lipopo, has been in the news for making comments deemed unkind to a Zimbabwean patient. The doctor told an unnamed patient who left uh, Zimbabwe for Limpopo after being injured in a car accident that she should have stayed in her country to receive medical care. Now, the patient underwent surgery at the Bella Bella Hospital and the health mech asked that she should not be discharged until she pays. According to Dr. Ramathuba, 91% of South Africans in Limpopo do not have medical aids and depend on the state. Many of them are not able to access medical aids owing to a lack of availability. And with the influx of foreigners, she said there's pressure on the country's resources. Now, this hasn't been easily accepted by foreigners, including Zimbabweans and Mozambicans. Some South Africans have also called for Ramathuba's resignation, while others have hailed her courage and defense of her people. Now, the Limpopo Health Mech has defended her actions and said she is fighting for her people. Many others, however, think otherwise. Joining me now to unpack this on the square is Dr. Angelique Kotzi. Uh, she's Advisory Member Solidarity Doctors Network. Good to see you, uh, Doctor. And of course, uh, another Dr. Norman Matara, who is the Secretary of Zimbabwe Doctors on human rights. Uh, let's start with you, Dr. Kotze. Uh, what do you make of uh, Dr. Robert Uber's comments? Uh, it's still trending and Africans are still worried and disturbed. Yeah, thank you for allowing us to speak about this and, and having this debate. It's a great debate and I think it's a necessary debate. I think there's two issues here at play. Um, one is um, the immigrants, as she um, referred to illegal immigrants, and blaming them for a failing healthcare system. That's the one issue. The other issue is the ethical duties and obligations that any doctor have against their patients. And um, in this case, uh, I, I don't think out of any ethical point of view, one can condone and say, no, she was right with what she done. You do not speak to a patient in that manner, it's even more so if you are the MEC of health. You do not um, address a patient in front of other healthcare personnel, other patients in that ward, in this matter. It doesn't matter who the patient is, that there is no excuse for that behavior of hers. Um, and I, I as, as, as a doctor in practice for more than 33 years, um, I cannot say what she did was right. On the matter of immigra immigrants, illegal immigrants, as she called them, coming into the country, um, I think that is a matter that needs to be addressed at a high political level with various departments of health. It's got nothing to do with a patient. And I think that's also an administrative uh, issue of any hospital. When a patient lies in the bed in front of you, 
it is not your duty as a doctor to distinguish um, whether this patient can pay, cannot pay. Your duty is to give the best health possible health care with what you have for that patient. And um, so there's a political thing as well. So Dr. Cox thinks, uh, well, uh, she crossed the line. Uh, Dr. Matara, what do you think? Uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, important um, uh, discussion that we're having today. I actually agree with uh, Dr. Cox today. Um, I think uh, the issues that uh, Dr. Popey raised um, uh, in that short video clip, uh, they are actually valid uh, points that she, that she raised, but I think she raised, she raised them uh, on the wrong platform. Uh, she wore her political jacket and took that political jacket into a medical ward. And uh, we think that was very unprofessional, uh, as uh, said by Dr. Koze. Um, we really think that uh, as a medical doctor, it's not uh, professional to talk to a patient in that manner. Uh, the issues that she was raising, they were far much uh, beyond the level of that, uh, of that patient. And at that, at that point, uh, the patient is uh, someone who is uh, actually very vulnerable. You are sick, you are in a ward, you are in a foreign country. I think uh, at that point, you are actually very, very uh, vulnerable. And as a medical doctor, it is actually our duty to actually make sure that uh, the best interests uh, of the patient are uh, kept. And uh, what uh, she actually said, I thought, I don't think uh, these are uh, words that you can actually say uh, in a medical ward. So she really uh, acted uh, uh, unprofessional. Uh, she was very un uh, unethical. She denigrated the patient. She humiliated the patient in front of other medical professionals. And uh, we really don't think uh, that is uh, uh, how a trained medical professional, professional should uh, uh, really act. And as previously said, I think these are administrative issues and uh, they are places or positions where you can uh, debate uh, on those issues and definitely not uh, in a hospital ward. Well, I, you know, uh, Dr. Kotze, uh, I'm, I'm excited how you left off because uh, you left off uh, leaving the politics out of it. And uh, you decide to say, uh, you know, on the professional line. But again, uh, but in between all of this, uh, some other South Africans will be asking the question if this has been blown uh, out of proportion, uh, knowing that this uh, is something that would, they would want to hear more from uh, experts like yourself. Over the years, you said uh, over three uh, decades of in, in practice, ha have you seen a thing like this before from a medical professional who openly would chastise a patient uh, uh, getting medical attention? No, I haven't um, been encountered this type of behavior from a medical doctor. Um, I do believe that um, we are going to see much more now going forward because there will be some nursing staff or doctors that will sympathize, sympathize with Dr. Ramatuba and taking it out on these vulnerable patients. And I'm again going to say, if the patient is in the ward, my duty is to treat the patient. The logistics, the payment, anything else is an administrative problem. It's not my problem. If there was not money, if, they, if it was an illegal immigrant, then at the reception, it should have been taken care of. It's not the work of the doctor. Um, and I will stick to this. The other problem that we do have is we don't have proper stats. So in the end of the day, it becomes a, a, a you know, a sort of an anecdotal type of thing where we say, yes, 70% no, um, of females giving birth in certain hospitals is from um, is, is illegal immigrants. Do we really have the stats backing it, uh, backing it up? The, pro the thing is, it might be true. But we, our system is not allowing us to track and trace these patients. So this has got nothing to do then with the immigrants. It's our own failure, our own Department of Health, whether it's provincial or uh, um, national, that is failing us by not providing us good stats. I also do not believe that there, is no, that there are no hospitals in Zimbabwe that cannot give care to patients, uh, especially patients that would like to deliver. 
I'm glad we've got Dr. Matara here, and, and I think he can maybe uh, also elaborate on that. With this, I'm not saying that everything is right in Zimbabwe, but also everything is not um, okay with our healthcare system in South Africa, especially in the uh, public sector. We've got a lot of challenges. And um, again, this should not happen to a patient. Doesn't matter who you are. Uh, I'll let uh, Dr. Matara come in, but, but just uh, before we do that, uh, let's uh, go back and take a look for those Africans uh, who missed out on uh, the clip or, of that particular story. And for those who are wondering what uh, MEC means in South Africa, that's a member of the Executive Council. Uh, so we're talking about a medical doctor who's just not uh, an ordinary uh, medical doctor in practice, but someone who also is a politician and looking a fellow African in the eye and saying, wait a minute, you have to pay for this. You have no business coming here. So before we get to Dr. Uh, Matara, let's uh, go back and uh, see how it played out. <laughs> you speak Shona. And then how do you find yourself in Vila Vila <laughs> when you are supposed to be with Mundangago there? You know he doesn't give me money to operate you guys. <laughs> and I'm operating you with my limited budget. Thank you so much. Oh, well, you can't appreciate that. <laughs> you're, killing, you're killing my health system. You are killing my health system. When you guys are sick, I'm hearing these days, you just say, let's cross the Mbopo River. There's an MEC there who's running charity department. It's not. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something that is truthful and painful. You know, that SA goes and count people during the census and tell me that in Limpopo you have got 5.7 million people and tell me out of that 5.7 million, 91% do not have medical aid. They are dependent on the state. Uh, nine percent, they will say, has got medical aid. They depend on private hospital, and then they go and give national treasure. When national treasure allocates its budget, they said Limpopo has got 5.7 uh, uh, million people, and they subtract the ninety one, the seven percent, nine percent, and they give me the budget of the ninety one to do all these operations. Now. I am here, instead of using the budget for what it's meant for, I'm operating for what Munangwabwa is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And that is why when my people of Limpopo want health services, they can't get. Mm -hmm. And that is angering the community. Because you are coming here to act hours in George Masai. We are busy operating Mozambique and National everywhere. And you are not even registered anywhere. You are not counted. You are even illegal. And you are abusing me. This is unfair. It's unfair. I can't go to Zimbabwe and get health care. More than a humanity uh, problem. Uh, Dr. Matara, was that a message to the Zimbabwean government? Uh, definitely. I think uh, as a politician, um, Dr. Popi was actually directing her message uh, to the Zimbabwean government through the patient. Uh, as I said previously before, uh, I really think that uh, it was actually unprofessional to relay her message uh, through a helpless patient who was lying on a hospital bed. But, uh, you know, um, if you look closely uh, at, at the message that she was uh, really spreading, I think... Um, the message is actually really valid uh, because you know healthcare is not it's not something that is uh, for free. Uh, we have a lot of uh, illegal immigrants who are flocking to South Africa at the moment, and as she rightfully said, uh, the budget that she is given uh, she is given based on the figures of people who are actually documented uh, through the national census, and uh, then you actually have people who are not documented coming into the hospitals, uh, and uh, she does not have the funding to actually take care of, um, uh, of, of, of those people. So you, we think that um, as a country, it's time to look actually at the root cause of what is causing our people to actually migrate to other countries to look for uh, health care. We actually have uh, uh, citizens who are actually going for elective 
uh, procedures in South Africa. You know, those are not emergency cases, but uh, they are just uh, elective, they are non emergency. Um, and uh, because they cannot access the services here in Zimbabwe, they just cross the border and go to South Africa where they can receive uh, uh, those services. So I think the message was really, really directed to, uh, to the Zimbabwean government to say that uh, please uh, take care of the mess that is happening in our country. Um, and um, as I said before, although uh, the message was really, really valid, I don't think it was the proper place for a medical professional to say those uh, messages. I think as a politician, uh, they should relay that message to the government and then they can be um, government to government talks to see how they can come up with a political solution to that. It's not up to the doctor to look up for, it, for, for a solution of uh, immigrants. So Dr. Matara, let me stay with you a bit before I come back to Dr. Kotze because uh, I'll need Dr. Kotze to help us uh, uh, elaborate and tell us uh, if that, uh, because uh, uh, Dr. Kotze, um, I'd love to know what that would do to someone's psychology uh, for a patient who is in a hospital to get all of that on the sick bed. But first, uh, Dr. Uh, Matara, the Limpopo Health Mech, uh, looking at what she said there, she said she did that for her people. Uh, she emphasized her budget. Uh, so what do you make of that? Because uh, some are divided. Some Africans in South Africa, they think that is patriotic. Some others, and even the EFF in South Africa, think that is uh, xenophobic in nature. Matara. Dr. Matara, I wanted you to uh, uh, let us in on what you think uh, about that. Uh, if you can hear me, Dr. Matara, uh, are you there? Well, for those uh, Joyce and Johnners, I think I, I lost a connection uh, to uh, Dr. Matara, who is in uh, Zimbabwe, and of course, uh, as well as Dr. Kotze, who is uh, live with us from South Africa. As soon as we get that connection back, we'll be having that conversation with them. Uh, just a bit of story background there. You saw the video there, and that's a, a South African member of Executive Council who is uh, also a doctor, uh, talking about Dr. Ramathubez, uh, who encountered, or rather accosted a patient uh, a, a receiving treatment in uh, her region, in the Limpopo area, and categorically, specifically, uh, well, had a go uh, at the patient, saying that, look, you are shortchanging my people in Limpopo, looking at a medical budget, because whatever you get in here now uh, seem to be uh, eaten up into my budget. So I'm happy that both of you are back. Apologies, uh, looks like the connection uh, to you both uh, uh, was uh, actually cut off uh, from my line here, but I can see Dr. Kotzi and Dr. Matara. Thanks for your time and thanks for your patience. Good to know you both are here. So I was asking Dr. Matara before we come to Dr. Kotzi. Now, listening to Dr. Ramathuba, she spoke a lot. She said something about her budget. She said uh, uh, a few things about that eating up, uh, you know, the uh, budget meant for her people. Do you think that, uh, well, as some have said, even the EFF, one of the opposition parties in uh, South Africa, they think that was xenophobic, but some others think that the doctor was being patriotic? Dr. Matara. All right, thank you for uh, that question. I think, as I said previously before, uh, the budget uh, that is allocated to a province is uh, actually based on the number of uh, people uh, who are in that, uh, in that province. And uh, the number of illegal or undocumented immigrants are not included uh, in that. So for, for example, what may happen, I'm just giving figures off my head, uh, they may base uh, that budget uh, with, let's say in Limpopo, there are 4 million people, yet there are 6 million because there are other 2 million people who are undocumented. These are not official uh, figures, but just uh, an example. So she basically she will end up being uh, under un, un, underfunded because uh, she is being given a budget based on a misleading on a misleading figure. So that person who is documented or that person who is um, uh, a South African citizen may end up getting shortchanged uh, because of that. So I think she was actually raising uh, a valid uh, point, uh, but. Um, what we really need to look into at the moment is to see how can we have uh, those people who are not documented have the papers so that they can they are included uh, in, in, 
in the budget when the budget for the healthcare for that province is uh, actually uh, considered. So as we said before, these are, are political issues. Uh, and uh, as long as we do not solve the political crisis, the economic crisis and the social crisis here in this country in Zimbabwe, we continue to have people flocking to South Africa and this problem will continue to, 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 to happen. So this problem cannot be solved by someone refusing treatment to a, to a patient who is already in a hospital. This is a, a, a government to government uh, crisis and the crisis can only be solved by uh, the two governments of Zimbabwe and the government of South Africa uh, having a dialogue to make sure that the political and economic crisis in Zimbabwe is actually solved. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that we can actually uh, solve uh, this problem that we are having. As long as we have a problem in Zimbabwe and people do not have access to basic health care, and there is basic health care in South Africa, people will continue crossing the border and people will continue to seek uh, 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 healthcare. There is no way where someone who just sit at home in Zimbabwe, when they know that if they just cross the border, they can access the services that they are looking for. And Dr. Kogze, um, you know, one wonders, people always talk about mental health. Uh, that's another big one. And uh, some are also looking at what that may have caused the patient in question, and even others who were there and who may also uh, be non-South Africans, and knowing full well that we, we, we witnessed a lot of chuckles uh, in that video. Uh, people chuckled over what she was saying and how that can actually affect the patient. To help us, uh, you know, in practice, for the layman, uh, layman's understanding, uh, how does such encounter affect uh, someone who's already, you know, down seeking medical attention? Question. So what will normally, you can put yourself in the shoes of the patient, you will feel um, humiliated. You can even have a bit of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, if you know, and next time when you want to come back to South Africa, you will think twice. And your own self-esteem might, um, might be extremely low because you are, you want the best for yourself. Your own government can't give it to you. You try some another country, and it's easy to walk across the border because most of the times there's no fences. So whose who's, who's fault is that? Is that the patient's fault? I want health care, and I am in a country, and I know if I walk um, 50 k's in a certain direction, I will be able to get health care, and I will do that. But that's a human thing. As Dr. Mutara correctly said, this is something that needs to be addressed at... at uh, total different platform. But also, going to say again, as long as we don't have proper stats in the hospitals addressing um, who is a South African citizen versus an immigrant versus an illegal immigrant coming into the country, as long as we don't keep proper stats of that, so as to enable us to say, look, we have seen so many people from Zimbabwe coming to give birth, so many people from Zimbabwe um, coming for cancer treatment, so many people from Mozambique coming for X, Y, and Z. If we can have that proper stats, we can then sit with the governments and of the, of the neighboring countries and sort the problem. For now, we don't have that stats. And unfortunately, it's not the problem of the, of, of, of the patient or of the other governments. It's our own failure because we do not keep good um, record of the patients, where they're coming from. And you cannot rely on an ID. I have said many times before, we need to look at biometrics so that you can trace a patient much better. I can fake an ID, I can fake anything if I want to, and if I'm really desperate, um, we all know how, um, how people can come up with, with very um, innovative ideas. And I think one needs to, to understand that. And again, it's the wrong platform. It's not the patient that should be punished for this. And whether Zimbabwe can look after their patients or not, if we can give them the proper stats and we can say, can we help you in your country 
to fix that as well so that our burden is less, then let's do it. But if we don't have the proper stats, only what the specialists and the doctors in the hospitals are telling us, it's not coming from the administrative uh, wing. We cannot do a lot on that. And who, again, whose fault is that? The, fault, the fact that your budget is being worked out on um, people in your, can, in, in, in your province, why haven't you not started yet to count people making use of the healthcare system from outside of South Africa so that you can present that to Stat South Africa and show them the real problem? If you can't do that, if you can't measure something, <clears throat> you cannot uh, expect then to, to, um, to, 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 to get it right. You have to make sure that you have proper systems in place. And, and Doc, Dr. Matara, should there be means through which Zimbabwean nationals, because what Dr. Kotzi has said is very important, and it borders on the uh, SADC membership state. I'll come back to SADC pretty much later because we need to talk about the 16 members of uh, SADC, and that's the Southern African Development Community. If it's a community, listen to what uh, Dr. Kotzi has said, and this comes back to government, to the politicians, now, they have a borderless state. Uh, how well have you been able to ensure that these people who go through different borders, because she said it's human nature uh, for you to seek medical help or to go towards where you need, your need is available. Now, uh, Dr. Matara, should there be means through which Zimbabwean nationals who live very close, I mean very close to South Africa and enjoy their medical systems too, uh, how can Zimbabwe reach this agreement with South Africa? All right, yeah, so we, we, uh, in that point, uh, we need to understand that uh, even the undocu undocumented uh, and uh, illegal migrants uh, in Zimbabwe are actually also contributing to the South African uh, economy. They live there, they buy food. They buy clothes, they pay housing and things like that. So they're actually contributing to the to the economy. There was actually a report by the another gain. Uh, looks like uh, we, we 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 lost that. Uh, well, I hope I can get that back again, and I'll bring you back on the show so that we can actually uh, talk more uh, uh, talk more, more about that. Uh, Dr. Kotze, you you said three key things here. Uh, you, you mentioned illegal immigrants. You also talked about the migrants, and these are the legal ones. And also you talk about South Africans. Now, I, I was going to look at the regional bodies, but again, uh, I'll take a moment. We'll go on a short one. When we come back, we'll talk more about the regional bodies in Africa and see how cohesive and how united they've been uh, for the good of Africans and even non-Africans. That's when we come back. Stay with us. Well, it's our home run here on VSA, and uh, the South African public health care system is uh, in the news, uh, which is believed to be struggling to meet the health care needs of its citizens. And this, uh, the government claims, uh, may have informed Dr. Ramathuba's reaction. Now, while Pan-Africanists have blamed the health uh, member of the executive uh, committee uh, of uh, Limpopo for not embodying the true spirit of unity, the realities of the situation uh, call for more critical analysis, according to public analysts. Now, it, however, asks for a high moral obligation and standard in the treatment of patients, according to the National Health Act of South Africa and the Refugee Act of South Africa. Still with me here on the square is Dr. Angelique Kotzi and Dr. Norman Matara. Uh, thanks for your time, doctors, and uh, we're hoping uh, that uh, we can get our fingers on what we're dealing with at the moment. Uh, before we went on break, uh, we actually wanted uh, Dr. Matara to let us in on what he thinks uh, about uh, the uh, Southern African Development Community, uh, if uh, they've been able to speak in unison and have this conversation between South Africa and the neighboring countries and say, wait a minute, we can have this uh, uh, understanding on how we can have a, a cohesive human, uh, you know, working relationship, especially as it relates to health uh, 
uh, care. Yeah, so um, I was saying that uh, I think the Southern African Development Committee has uh, actually really failed us uh, as uh, Zimbabweans and uh, really failed the whole of Southern Africa because uh, uh, Zimbabwe has been having a political crisis for almost 22 years now. Uh, and uh, there seem to be no solution in place from um, the, 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 the Southern African Development Committee. Uh, we have had a political crisis from elections, which um, uh, we, we, we disputed it, uh, here in Zimbabwe, um, and uh, there seemed to be no uh, solution uh, to, 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 to that. We actually had uh, a crisis in 2008 um, uh, where we had a political crisis, we had an economic crisis, uh, we had people who were actually being targeted, members of the opposition were actually being killed, maimed, uh, and the Southern African Development Committee uh, sent a representative who was uh, 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 at the moment, and they actually said there is no pro crisis in Zimbabwe at that time when everyone could see that there is actually a very big crisis uh, in Zimbabwe. So as long as uh, we continue to ignore uh, these uh, situations that we have uh, in Zimbabwe, uh, the war problems that South Africa is facing, even neighboring countries like Botswana is also having uh, that problem of uh, Zimbabweans coming into their country. That is actually not uh, going to end. That problem cannot be solved uh, by talking on a hospital level. Uh, this is uh, a political crisis. This is an economic crisis. Uh, we really need to solve uh, that uh, problem as, uh, as, as, as SADAC. And as, uh, if SADAC continues to ignore uh, the Zimbabwean problems, then we actually do not have the, a permanent solution in crisis. And as we said before, no one can stay at home if they are ill, if they have got a problem, and when they know that if they just cross the border, there is a, a solution uh, somewhere. There is human nature to seek uh, better services. So we cannot uh, address this issue by saying that South Africans uh, should uh, uh, continue accepting uh, Zimbabweans uh, to their hospital facilities and, uh, and things like that. But we should actually look at the root problem to say, what are the push factors that are pushing Zimbabweans to actually go and seek our medical services uh, in neighboring countries? And if we could solve that, then we can have a permanent solution to this crisis. And, and uh, uh, you know, Dr. Kotze, it's, it's very instructive that uh, the, the SADC and governments uh, around the region uh, listen to your analysis. Uh, you categorize them into three. Uh, you, you spoke about illegal migrants. You also spoke about the migrants, which in this case will be the legal ones, and of course, uh, South Africans. And many are saying that even in, that's a principle in, the, in refugee law, the principle of non reformment You can actually send back someone who's running from a well-founded fear of persecution or or some kind of uh, harm back to where he or she is coming from. So at what point should the SADC, uh, you know, uh, as a community, uh, sit down and look at some of the key points you've raised today? Uh, as humans, you said, uh, when you're in dire need, you pursue what will give you succor at every cost, uh, irrespective of what anyone thinks. So there are lapses, there are gaps in governance, so to speak. So what should we see, especially in the health sector of these African countries? That's a very good um, uh, uh, um, question that you're raising. So I'm going to say again, if you can't measure it, and you can't manage it, you are allowed to, for your own opinion, but not your own facts. So we need to get the facts. And to get that, we need to measure it. So that's where South Africa should start, first of all. If we have the facts, we can go and sit with the governments of um, the various neighboring countries of SADC and figure out how to solve this problem. And as it correctly said, in the end of the day, it's a political problem. If we can form partnerships, with Zimbabwe, with other countries, taking corruption out, taking mismanagement out, making sure that the money goes to where it's supposed to go for healthcare, not in someone else's pocket, not for someone else to eat now. You can get that right, 
and um, we work together, that can work. Uh, I don't for one minute, moment think that there are not places like PEPFAR or institutions or organizations like PEPFAR, not all also trying to assist Zimbabwe, especially on the HIV. Um, we need to look at um, and, 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 and see whether we can help them from South Africa with what we have learned. And I'm quite sure that we can also learn from other SADC countries. I don't think we are so good that we cannot learn. Um, it's, a, it's a learning curve, but again, you cannot measure it, you cannot manage it, you're allowed to your own facts, uh, or your own opinions, but not your own facts. We need the facts. And Dr. Kotze, uh, listen to both of you, uh, Dr. Matara, uh, all eyes will be on SADC, whether you like it or not. And uh, that's a, a body uh, of 16 countries, uh, Southern African Development Community. Uh, it's a regional economic community comprising 16 member uh, states. And uh, uh, let's quickly see if we can actually look at the membership. Uh, Angola, uh, Botswana, Comoros, Democratic Republic of uh, Congo, Eswatini, Lesotho, Madagascar, Malawi, Mauritius, Mozambique, Namibia, Seychelles, South Africa, United Republic of Tanzania, Zim Zambia, as well as Zimbabwe. And also to think that uh, South Africa, Republic of South Africa, joined the Southern African Development Community as the 11th member uh, state in April of 1994 and also attended the SADC summit for the first time in August of 1994. There are quite a number of questions a lot of people are asking, uh, asking if truly uh, this has worked for the people around the union. Uh, and uh, that is why uh, some of those we also spoke to on the square here, the EFF members are also thinking that uh, this hasn't actually you know, gone down well uh, for anyone who calls himself or herself as Africans. So uh, some medical doctors uh, have come out uh, in support of uh, uh, Dr. Ramathuba saying uh, South Africans are unable to get proper treatment or into the limited resources. Now, uh, help us make sense of this, uh, Dr. Matara. A private hospital offered uh, to pay for the medical services of the patient. Uh, that's a private hospital. So, is this of a, is this, how does this work? Because listening to yourself and Dr. Kotze, uh, the Hippocratic Oath comes to mind uh, for a private hospital to now jump in and say, wait a minute, let's save the country, uh, the embarrassment, and come to the aid of the patient. Matara. Uh, well, so I think uh, the private hospital that came in uh, to uh, assist the patient. I'm not sure if they were able to identify the patient and actually assist uh, the uh, the patient uh, uh, in the final end. I think it was a good gesture from them to, to actually do that. But uh, I think this is just a stopgap measure. I think this is not the first uh, patient that is going to come to South Africa. Uh, this is not the last patient. There are many others that are going to come there and uh, who cannot even afford to pay for those uh, elective uh, procedures. So in as much as it is a, a good gesture from the private uh, uh, hospital that offered that, um, there is, uh, this, this is not a permanent solution. How, uh, uh, how sustainable is it? I don't think uh, it's actually sustainable. Uh, many more patients are going to come in. And even if you look in Zimbabwe right now, we actually have a situation uh, of uh, uh, a nine-year-old who was attacked by hippopotamus um, I suffered severe injuries to the face. Uh, the patient is actually in a government hospital. They cannot actually discharge that patient because they have not paid uh, the medical bills uh, that is wanted by that government hospital. So you start to look at it and to say that, yes, there is this outcry uh, that uh, uh, the patient was refused to be discharged in South Africa. But back home, we still have our own Zimbabwe who are not even... Uh, going to be discharged because they have not paid uh, the, 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 the medical bills uh, that they are supposed to, to, to pay. So I, I, I think it was just grandstanding from, uh, that, uh, uh, from that hospital and uh, to try and um, 
get a solution and maybe to try and put this uh, issue under the bridge and save the country from uh, embarrassment. But mm. it's not a permanent solution because we are still going to have many more patients going to South Africa, many more patients who cannot afford to pay for those services. And I don't think that private hospital can continue paying for those uh, patients. You know, Dr. Kotzi and uh, Dr. Matara, you're both not the only ones talking about this and uh, showing the importance of uh, even non-medical professionals uh, uh, weighing in on this. As much as we try to avoid, uh, you know, to navigate the murky waters of politics and not jump into the fray because you're both professionals, let's see what uh, uh, a political group is saying in South Africa, specifically the EFF that has called for the resignation. That's the letter there. And the EFF is saying that uh, they're calling for the immediate removal. Uh, they described uh, her as a cynical, arrogant, and morally bankrupt. Of course, you know, the EFF is uh, very hard with the words. Uh, Mech of Health in Limpopo, uh, Dr. Ramathuba, for her inhumane comments towards a sickly patient in a hospital in Bella Bella in Limpopo. And they go on to, uh, if you look at the third paragraph, they, they described it as Afrophobic Afro uh, attack by Ramathuba on a bedridden patient is cruel and malicious and has no justification. It is a slippery slope because health rights are human rights and attempt to rationalize the denial of the provision of health care on the basis of someone's nationality will lead to gross human violations uh, whose logic is pure hatred. And uh, they also think that uh, the uh, politician doctor is reckless and uh, joining uh, others to say uh, she should resign. But uh, uh, that's uh, for one uh, big political group in South Africa. Uh, let's uh, ask Dr. Kotze, how can these issues be projected without making it seem like a subtle case of medical xenophobia? Uh, this is a uh, this is difficult um, because uh, you know when doctors are saying they don't have enough equipment, they don't have enough means to treat their own patients or their own people. Is it solely can it solely be um, contributed to only immigrants? Is there other problems in the in the, in, in these provinces? that leads to mismanagement, that leads to corruption, that leads to poor healthcare outcomes. Um, so as much as, as, as one wants to put the blame on the immigrants, it's a much bigger problem than immigrants. The next problem that you're sitting with is if, um, if you want to bowl these immigrants, you should actually bowl the government. You should again be back to government to government. But if you don't have proof that this is indeed a Zimbabwean citizen illegally in our country, um, and you then bill Zimbabwe for, for that, for that health care um, uh, uh, that the patient received, Zimbabwe can turn around and say, but hey, that's not my patient, that's not a Zimbabwean patient. So you end up with a huge problem or back into whose patient it is and who's supposed to be paying for this um, treatment. So one needs, again, to get measurements in place so that you can measure it. And then, as I've said before, I think one of the things um, for me, biometrics, uh, I'm long past IDs and, and that type of thing. If you don't have an ID, if you, don't, if you are illegal in the country, then and you need your health care. It's not up to me to refuse you health care. It, um, it, it lies on a different level. When you come in front of me in a bed or in my clinic, I need to treat you. I've got an obligation to treat you, an ethical obligation. So again, it brings us back. There must be a, a, a well-documented program or process between all these countries, the SADC countries, how do we handle this? It's not a new problem. Make, make no mistake. It's an, it's an old problem. It's coming from quite some time. Mm -hmm. And I understand that Dr. Ramatuba was um, very, uh, um, you know, upset and she had enough. Again, it's the wrong platform. Um, and we need to address this uh, or, or on a governmental level. 
They cannot just um, push it under the carpet or swipe it under the carpet. We need to sort this. It's not going to go away. And if we know what the problems are and how um, important these problems are and what is the cost to our economy, health economy, then we can start to address. But you cannot just address and going and saying that the specialists are saying so many people or the nurses are saying so many people are um, illegal immigrants. How did they how did they determine they are illegal immigrants? Because that, again, is an administrative um, issue. It should have been handled in the, when the, once the patient walked into the front door. We also need to understand that there are people from other countries coming into for health um, reasons that's immigrants or um, to make um, use of our health care and paying for their services. So I'm just afraid that at some stage, everyone who is seen as an immigrant coming into a country automatically will be classified as illegal and cannot get any health care in our country. And we should not allow that because it's not up to us. That's the politicians. It's a big it. point. It's, it's a big point you've raised, uh, Dr. Kotze, is not up to us. Uh, it's up to the politicians. They need to put in place, you know, uh, uh, structures uh, to get these numbers uh, so that people don't just uh, start pointing fingers on any African or anyone within such communities and say you are an illegal immigrant. Uh, let's quickly see what Zimbabwe, the, the embassy of Zimbabwe is saying, because they also brought out a statement uh, reacting to this. And uh, the embassy is saying, well, uh, it washed with shock and disbelief uh, the video in which the member of the Executive Council of Health, uh, Limpopo province, spoke to a Zimbabwean national who happened to be a patient in a hospital in the province. Uh, the embassy went on to say, uh, it has been in contact with the government of South Africa through the Department of International Relations and cooperation to who it has conveyed the concerns of the government of Zimbabwe on the comments made by the MEC. It's just uh, the same thing you both uh, have uh, talked about. The countries uh, should have this uh, you know, conversation. And of course, uh, uh, a national uh, is also uh, writing on this, talking about uh, the dehumanizing uh, of a patient based on nationality and uh, the co community in South Africa, uh, the Zimb Zimbabwe community in South Africa uh, is saying that it is dismayed, uh, if not astonished, by the deceitful treatment and humiliation of an obviously frail and powerless patient in Limpopo by an official of the highest rank in the province. And it went on and on and on. Uh, and uh, Dr. Matara, uh, let's because uh, we're coasting home, and uh, some of the key things that Dr. Kotsi has said uh, resonate with a lot of Africans. I'm going through the comments, and they think that uh, we need to put a stop to this. And the governments of these countries and African politicians must come together and see how this can be resolved. We just saw the Operation to do that trend not too long ago. And uh, it's amazing that once upon a time, Africans will cry out and say people from other continents are actually uh, poking at them. But now fellow Africans are doing it to each other. How can the South African government correct these images that paint the country uh, as a xenophobic one, uh, Dr. Matara? Uh, I think uh, if you look uh, at uh, some of these people who are still being considered uh, illegal um, uh, uh, immigrants uh, in South Africa, you can see that some of them have actually stayed for more than five years, some even more than 10 years, but they are still undocumented uh, in the country. We actually have um, medical doctors who go to South Africa to specialize uh, the registers, the supernumerary registers. They actually go through uh, their four years of training, uh, working in South African uh, hospitals for free, and still they cannot get a permit to actually work in that, uh, in that same country. Uh, so I think this is something that uh, the South African can actually, South African government should, should actually push uh, to do, to make sure that those people who have stayed in, in, in South Africa for such a, 
uh, period of time. They actually get the papers. Because as I said before, these are people who are actually contributing to the South African uh, uh, economy. In 2019, uh, the International Labour Organization actually published a report to say that uh, those undocumented immigrants, they actually pay taxes to the South African uh, uh, government and contribute to the economy actually three times more uh, than, 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 than the locals. So these are, I think there should be a push to make sure that those people, uh, their stay in South Africa is actually regularized through formal documents so that um, when uh, the budget is actually being put in place for the South Africa, they can actually be counted and then uh, the exact amount or uh, the correct amount should be allocated to, 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 to each province. So this is something that I think the South African government is lacking and uh, this is something that they can push in to, see, to make sure that people who have been living in South Africa, people who have been working in South Africa, if their document, documents are, are, regular, are regularized uh, in, that, in that country. And uh, uh, a word of, uh, you know, the last word from you, Dr. Kotze, before we go. Uh, what more would you like uh, uh, to see uh, from governments and the people uh, to ensuring that this doesn't continue? Because uh, as I say, if something has been activated, we might see more. Well, I agree with Dr. Matara's last comments. And I need to say that health is, good health is a privilege. And if you are sick, you are, you are entitled, it's your human right to get treatment. And that governments make, must make sure that those doors are open for these patients and that it doesn't become a xenophobic or an Afrophobic type of thing. Um, it is not uh, always the patient um, that's caught in the middle. This is not the patient that created the political um, instability in Zimbabwe. It's not the patient that is responsible for the healthcare in South Africa that is struggling as well at this stage. It lies on a different level, but when it comes to health, we have to provide healthcare the best of our ability. The rest is up to the politicians that we, that we have chosen to run the, the countries. All right. And we need to take responsibility for that as well. I'd like to thank you both for being such a nice company, Dr. Angelique Kotzi and Dr. Norman Matara. Uh, I hope that uh, some other time in the nearest uh, future, we should have you both to talk more about health. And uh, from the square here, we'd like to congratulate you both uh, for staying on the continent doing this uh, work. Uh, well, it's not an easy one. And for those that have left the continent, we say, keep an eye on the continent. And for the government, we say, keep an eye on the sector and ensure that your doctors are better catered for and look after the sector and get the better out of them and fix the health sector. And Sulaiman, thanks for watching.